Hi, welcome. I'm going to introduce to you ArcGIS Enterprise. I'm going to give you a basic overview of its architecture and just show you kind of all the different pieces. ArcGIS Enterprise isn't just one thing. It's a whole series of products that come together to solve a problem. And that problem is simply web sharing your GIS. Now, I'm sure you've heard of ArcGIS Online. ArcGIS Online and ArcGIS Enterprise are actually the same thing. And I'll show you how the two compare as well. So uh, why don't we get started? So we've talked about this concept of web tiers or application tiers. And it's an important concept here because we're going to be diving into some of the, these different tiers that make up ArcGIS Enterprise. So we have a web tier, a middle tier, and a database tier. Now the internet comes in and connects to the web tier. Uh, the middle tier is usually software that basically is like plumbing that connects the database side of things and basically makes it available for the web. And we're going to look how ArcGIS Enterprise is in all three of these different tiers. Now to start, the way I'm going to do this is go through how uh, the architecture of ArcGIS Online looks and then we'll compare that to ArcGIS. GIS uh, or sorry, ArcGIS server is, and then we'll look into ArcGIS Enterprise. So the first thing is ArcGIS Online is really just a catalog of items. It's an item database, and it has a whole bunch of different items in it. I'm sure you've seen these items, and they, they look pretty familiar. And we'll, let's just go take a look at one quickly. So here is an item page from a public item, and it's from uh, US training actually, uh, in uh, US Forest Service data getting published. And you can see there's a title, um, there's a description, who owns the data, the data it's created, the last time it was updated, the view count, a description, the layers that comprise it, including the base maps, and terms of use as well as comments. So this type of page exists for pretty much every item that is inside of ArcGIS Online. And it's called items, that's what Esri actually calls it. You can even see that up here, it's called item is the page. And there's this big long number letter combination. This unique identifier is what is kind of like the file name in ArcGIS Online. And that file name obviously is uh, um, running in this case uh, or hosting this item and this item in particular is a web map and uh, that's what really makes up this item. And if we look at this other item which is a layer and you can see it does have a little bit of different information associated with it uh, versus the first one only had two options up here this one has a few more options this is the layer itself. It still has all the same elements you saw, but you can see how that the information on the screen changes depending on what type of item you're looking at. This one, for example, has a data tab, so you can actually see the data itself. So that's uh, this item itself is obviously a little bit different just simply because it's data, whereas this is a map that contains that data. So ArcGIS Online, this is basically all it's doing. Um, the, there's a portion of it which is managing these items and the text that's in it, and it's storing it all. And that's what this item database is doing. So the, the item database itself doesn't actually uh, store anything other than metadata or information about information, and it's, uh, it's what's comprising that. Now there is a second side of this, and the web traffic, first of all, comes through uh, port 80 or 443 um, and actually ArcGIS Online now only allows 443 or HTTPS connections. We should update that. But um, the second portion is this GIS server, which is a REST endpoint. And you can actually see that in the second item right here. The data, this is being displayed as if it's part of the item, but it actually isn't. If you go down here, there's a URL and you can see if I go view on this URL, it actually opens up this ArcGIS REST services directory. This is where the data are coming from. So the item database does not so store the data. 
the REST endpoint is the gateway to that data. And in this case, the data is stored likely in the back end on either a SQL server or Postgres server. Whatever it is in the cloud, it doesn't matter to us because we're using Esri services at this, uh, this case. So this is called the data store. That's where the data are stored. That's why it's called the data store. So you can see there's these two components and actually two very different types of databases that are powering ArcGIS Online. So there's the item database, which is just the metadata and storing that those little pieces of information with that uh, ID number. So this big long ID number for each item, which is unique. And then there's the data store and the data store itself actually is storing the data itself and it's accessible using a REST endpoint. Now let's compare this to how ArcGIS Enterprise is architected. Now typically in ArcGIS um, Online you have a whole bunch of applications and you're probably thinking, well, if this is just an items database, what are all these different applications that Esri has, like the Experience Builder or Field Maps or Survey123? Well, there are actually applications that are like add-ons and they can work with ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise, and you'll see that in a second. So for the most part, these do not store its data inside the item database or the data store, but instead they just use items from ArcGIS Online. Now some of them, like a simple web map, may actually store its information in an item database, and you can actually go see that in a, uh, using a couple of different tools, but that's beyond the scope of this video. So the items database for the most part is just metadata, and sometimes it does have settings associated with some applications, like a web map, and the data store really just stores data. The applications themselves manage their own configuration for whatever application it might be. As I said, like the Experience Builder would have its own website. Survey123 uses an Excel type spreadsheet to form the form. So all of these things are separate. Okay, so let's take a look at how you have an enterprise geodatabase typically in your organization. And this database uh, is in one of many different types of enterprise databases. Typically Oracle, SQL Server, Post, uh, GIS or Postgres are the, the ones that it's stored in, but sometimes you could actually store your data inside of a file geodatabase. That's valid as well, even in an enterprise scenario. So these are what Esri calls the enterprise geodatabases. And so enterprise geodatabases are uh, built into the um, into the database to make it so that you can access its data using Esri tool sets and store Esri things inside of that database. And this is very different than the data store I was talking about before, which is why I'm pointing this out. Um, that data store that was in ArcGIS Online might look a little bit like these, but it's a completely different entity. This is what's called a black box. You can't access it. These, obviously, you as an administrator have to control and manage these infrastructures. Uh, you have to manage the data, you have to back it up, many different things you must do. Okay, so let's just pause for a second and look at what the components of ArcGIS Enterprise are, because this is a really important side of things. There's something called um, the base install, um, and there's different components associated with that. The first and probably the most important is the ArcGIS server itself. And this is what's powering your mapping. This is actually what's doing the work to retrieve, edit data, be able to display maps. This is what's doing that. The next is the portal. And the portal is what's storing and managing those items. So just like in ArcGIS Online, you saw there was two items. There was that REST endpoint, and then there was the items catalog. Uh, that's what these two things are. So the ArcGIS server is where the data are stored, and the portal is where the items are stored. So the next is this data store. And this is something that was new, built into ArcGIS Enterprise so that you didn't have to have an enterprise geodatabase, because that's a lot of work to understand and manage that type of infrastructure, and it's more akin to a GIS professional. The ArcGIS data store is sort of like a scratch space, but a little bit more polished, where you can just kind of put your data in there, you can play with it, you can manage it. And that kind of aligns with what uh, ArcGIS Online is trying to do. It's trying to allow the everyday GIS user to use GIS rather than just being limited to professionals. 
So the ArcGIS data store in this context does the exact same thing. It allows you to store data in it and manage data, but all through the portal interface and ArcGIS server that's um, aff affiliated with that uh, portal. And it's, it's called a federated server. Now the last thing that's in these are web adapters. And web adapters simply are ways to redirect ports because our, all of this is different um, software. So ArcGIS server is a piece of software, portal is a piece of software, the data store is a piece of software. Each of them is listening on different ports and you need to have the network plumbing to be able to make things work. And the web adapter is the way that Esri decided to solve that. So um, this is the com these are the components for that base install of ArcGIS Enterprise. You need all four of these items to be able to make an ArcGIS Enterprise work. That being said, you can use ArcGIS Server by itself. ArcGIS Server is its own product. It actually pre-exists ArcGIS Enterprise. ArcGIS Server uh, can publish services without uh, a portal and a data store. And that is a, a, a good pattern for some organizations. And it's actually a pattern used by many organizations. And it's one that we use in our course. Uh, but I want to at least show you the whole overall context. Um, if you understand how to use ArcGIS online, you know how to use uh, Portal. There's really no difference between the two. Okay, so back to my little diagram here, and you'll see that I have a firewall here and a public internet. And the reason for that is typically you have some things inside of your organization and some things uh, facing the internet. And the thing that punches through that firewall on a Windows computer is Internet Information Services, which is a web server. Now, we have that same concept of the GIS server as part of the ArcGIS Enterprise solution. And you can see there's two components to that. There's the GIS server, it's the engine, and then there's the REST endpoint. That's what the users access. So just like in the um, ArcGIS online environment up here, you can see they go through the REST endpoint into the GIS server to get at the data store. Well, this GIS server, um, it can access any one of those different resources. We, we have a lot more flexibility than what ArcGIS Online has. So we can configure one or more different databases in our environment, and we can actually access those um, through that ArcGIS server and publish services against this uh, GIS server. Now to get at this server from the web, we need to use something called a web adapter. And a web adapter is very simply a, UR, a way to get at the URL to, to get into it. And that's just something you install in the IIS. So the GIS server, ArcGIS server, does not actually install inside of a web server. It actually has its own built into it. And this web adapter's job is just simply to take a request from the internet and forward it to the correct location on the local computer. So without this web adapter, that GIS server might not be accessible without your uh, designing your own network plumbing to do this. And this web adapter does do other things, but it's beyond scope of this course. So this web adapter is important, and uh, it's actually not the only one. There's actually a second web adapter part of a standard uh, ArcGIS Enterprise install. And that has to do with uh, something different. That's obviously the, um, the portal, which ArcGIS Online, you can see that these two things are green. And this contains an item uh, database as well. And it needs a way to get out to the internet. And that, of course, is this web adapter too here. Now, it does have its own Esri data store, just like the data store that is up here. And that is storing not the items, there's an items database associated with it, but you can actually have hosted items in an enterprise, uh, ArcGIS enterprise uh, deployment. You can have hosted layers and they'll store in its own Esri uh, data store, but you can also have items that are stored and published through that uh, ArcGIS server from an, your own enterprise geodatabase. So you have, um, this is user managed data, and this is called ArcGIS managed data.
because you as an administrator of this portal actually don't even manage this data. It's just basically for user. That's why I call it like a scratch space. The line's really blurred between these two and there's some operations you can do in only one versus the other. Typically, if you're maintaining large data sets for an organization like a government, it's going to be in an enterprise geodatabase. It's not going to be in the Esri data store. But if you're doing field data collection, let's say using survey one, two, three, or uh, using field maps, that would be related to an item, and that item is related to this Esri data store. Um, although you can start putting stuff over here and there. That's one of the advantages of of uh, having your own ArcGIS Enterprise deployment, you have more control over how things work. But effectively, this whole thing in the organization here that's called the base deployment for ArcGIS Enterprise is doing the same thing that ArcGIS Online is doing. The only difference is this one, you don't have to worry about any of the infrastructure, you just pay and use it. This one though, you need to deploy all the servers. And it is actually possible to put all of this on a single server and make it work, but that's it's not a good idea. Um, typically you have different components on different servers. You'd have databases on one, uh, you would have the Esri data store potentially on another, uh, you would have the portal and the items database on one or combined with the ArcGIS server, and you could even have multiple ArcGIS servers. So you really can uh, deploy this however you see fit. And ArcGIS server itself even has different types of servers, like there's an image server, uh, which is an extra license. And you can deploy that as a bundle, as the same server, or you can put it onto two separate servers. So that way your image processing would actually occur on a dedicated uh, computer. Okay, so let's, um, let's talk about uh, ports here for a second, because each one of these things you need to access. Uh, the first one is the web adapter. And Typically, uh, coming through a firewall, the only thing you'll have punched or open to the IIS is port 80, which is HTTP, and port 443, which is HTTPS. Well, internally, the GIS server by default uses two different ports that reflect those. So 6443 and 6080, and this should, should sound uh, familiar. So 6080 sounds a lot like 80, and that's actually the HTTP port to this GIS server. And then you have 6443, which is the HTTPS port to that server. Likewise, Portal has a similar concept. It has two ports. One is for uh, 80 or HTTP uh, type traffic, and that's on 7080, so one larger number than this one. And then 7443 is for accessing it over SSL or HTTPS. Now, these two uh, if you're internal in the network, you could actually access these items directly, but that's not best practice. You only do that when you're trying to manage something. You, as an administrator, need to know these ports, but your users do not. Outside, they're going to access things through port 80 and 443. Um, your databases, they'll have their own ports again. So Oracle uses 1521 by default, SQL Server 1433, uh, PostGIS uh, 5432. Every single one of these has its own port. Even the data store is on 2443. It doesn't have a HTTP connection, but it, it, it is listening on 2443. So that's all of the different ports that ArcGIS uh, Enterprise will be using that you as an administrator would connect to. Now, technically speaking, this Esri data store is a, a post GIS, post GIS G, uh, database, and same with this one. And there are ports to access those, but that's not actually something you as an administrator are supposed to do. That is kind of a hacky way of getting at them. But that's how these are powering them. It's actually a, a post just uh, system. Okay, so back to here. So our users need to get from 80 and 443 on the web adapters into these environments. And that's really what these web adapters jobs are doing. And I've driv uh, drawn all these different lines to sh help you understand how traffic flows. So you make a request, you come into the web adapter and you get into the GIS portal and you can do that on HTTP or HTTPS. It then connects to the data store on that port or our GIS server on this port. If you wanted to access the GIS server directly, you can do that and you would go in and access it this way. So you would again use 80 or 443 over the web and then that web adapter translates your connection and does these. So the user never has to enter any of these ports in here. They only have to know 
how to access the using the default ports. So really, really simple. Now let's just take a quick look at a typical ArcGIS Enterprise install. Um, so this is the portal side of things, and you can see it looks a lot like ArcGIS Online. You have normal content here. If I had anything, I don't really have anything deployed on this. This is just a demo environment. Um, and you can see it lists a couple of map services and items. And each one of these things is an item, and it has an item page. And you can see that item still exists. So this is ArcGIS um, Enterprise. It's running on a, a server. And you can see it has that item page associated with it. I can open up in a map viewer. So again, it looks exactly like ArcGIS Online. So if you know how to use ArcGIS Online, this is pretty much the same. Now the ArcGIS server side of things, it looks a little bit different than a normal ArcGIS server because it's federated. And that federation simply means that anything published in this server will automatically work through them. So it's sharing security associated with the two. So when you deploy uh, an item to this environment, by going add item and then from your computer and uploading, for example, a, um, a database or um, a, a file geodatabase, it'll actually get added into this and it'll uh, end up becoming part of the environment. It'll get stored in the data store. So what I'm going to do is actually put a, um, a shape file into this and you can just go from your computer and you can add an item from that choose file and then we'll add that file and it's a shape file that's inside of this Canada and we'll just do a demo and we'll just follow this through as it's going so what it's going to first do is upload that item into ArcGIS Enterprise it will then go and add that item as actually a shape file and then the next thing it's going to do is actually extract that shape or sorry that zip file to get at the actual shape file itself and then it's going to create a service in the ArcGIS server and that service will be referencing that data and so this is what's called a feature layer that's something that's inside of ArcGIS uh, portal or ArcGIS online is always a feature layer when it's actually uh, in Esri format and by being hosted, that means it's getting stored inside that data store. So if it didn't have this hosted tag on it, it would actually be uh, stored in your enterprise geodatabase and published typically directly from an ArcGIS server. So it's not doing the format I've done. So I've just used the ArcGIS portal. I've uploaded my shapefile using the web adapter. So you notice I didn't have any of these special ports on it. I was just using a normal URL. And it's created the item, and then it started creating the uh, shape file and extracting it into the Esri data store for use on uh, the portal. So let's go back and take a look how that's working. And you can see now it's complete. And now I can go over to my data, and you can see I have 13 records, one for each province or territory. Um, and the data are in here. It's a host hosted feature layer, and I can open it up in a map viewer and take a look at that data. So all of this is occurring. If you notice from the URL up here, there's no special ports, uh, but it technically there are special ports behind this. So there's my, my data set, and you can color it the way you'd like. So this is what ArcGIS Enterprise is. And again, it looks no different than ArcGIS uh, Online. It's just that uh, I have to manage and set up all the servers and, and get everything working. So the second side of it, uh, this you would not have access to inside of uh, ArcGIS Online is managing the data itself and the server component. And so if we go over to services now, you'll see that there are two services listed under hosted here. Um, this was something also, but I, I can delete that. I'm not using it anymore, but uh, this one, the Canada one, um, is the one that I just created. And if we go in and take a look at it, it doesn't give me many options in here. And the reason it does that is because this server is federated. This service is a hosted feature service, so it's expecting you to manage it from within the ArcGIS portal environment. So let's go back to content and we'll take a look at the items that were created. And you can see there's Canada, there's two of them. 
One of them is a shape file, and that's the actual shape file. And then the other one is the Canada feature layer. So this basically got uploaded, and then it extracted this to create that. So I could delete this one. It doesn't have any impact on the feature layer. Um, it just would allow me to redeploy it. So if you go into the view item details in here, you can see it doesn't have many up, uh, details. Um, I could share this, meaning I could make someone download that file. It doesn't mean they can actually access the, the shape file itself. They would have to download it to their computer and use some software. So this is just, just a, a traditional item page. Whereas back here in content, on the Canada fe hosted feature layer, if we view item details on that, it has a lot more um, options because this is data. Uh, so the data itself, now I can actually go look at the data and I can also change the settings, make it editable. All of these different options that you would typically see in ArcGIS Online, you can do that with this. And that's uh, the reason all that's available to you is because it's stored in this Esri data store and therefore it's managed by Portal. So that's why this Esri data store is special. If you publish things against this ArcGIS server, um, which I do have another video that goes through that, and you can take a look at it. Um, it wouldn't, you can add it to ArcGIS portal, but it won't really do anything. Um, you can't manage it in here. It's just literally a pointer to that uh, REST endpoint. Okay, so let's go take a look at the data for a second here. So if I take a look at the overview here, if I look very bottom here, there's a URL associated with this. And if I go view on that URL, you'll notice it's for the most part, the same URL but it goes portal here. On this one, it goes same URL, but now it goes server. So you can see that you've jumped over to that other software. Now you're dealing with ArcGIS server and you can see REST services and it's a hosted feature service. I named it Canada and it's a feature server. And then I have my token to access it. And then you can see the data itself. And this works pretty similar to um, just a standard published ArcGIS server um, item, but remember, um, inside of the ArcGIS portal or ArcGIS Online, the only thing it really publishes are feature servers. It doesn't have the rich uh, types that it can publish like uh, a, a standalone ArcGIS server can. Okay, so we can see the server, we can see the portal, um, we can see the data access through the REST endpoint that's stored inside of this Esri data store. So we've gone through all these different ports and accessed these different items, and we've also used this. So at one point we were using the portal, and another point we're using the GIS server. We actually transitioned from one web adapter to the other. And you can see that uh, right here in the web adapter name. Portal is one of them, which is obviously getting to the portal. And the second one is called server in this case. That's configurable, uh, but I'm just using the defaults in this example. So there you go. I have. Uh, RTA server running, and I have published data associated with these different items. Now, all these ports, you as an administrator need to know them because you need to be able to use them to manage things. Um, you can access different special items associated with them. So let me just take a look at uh, an example. So if you're going to access it, this is the portal name. Uh, sorry, this is the server name. This is the alias for it. Let's drop this, and we're going to make this um, we're going to access it on its secure port. So we know we're accessing the ArcGIS server. Uh, we're accessing the server right here. So we're at 6443. Not too much open. We'll just close some of this up. There we are. So 6443 and it's ArcGIS, and let's get to the manager. And you can see it's now giving me a warning because the certificate is an internal certificate. This is a default install. It uses a self-signed certificate when you're dealing with these ports. So this is normal when you're accessing the internal ones unless you've configured it specifically to use something. So I'm gonna say, okay, you can continue on. And then I get to the manager login associated with this. But this server is special because it's federated. It's realized I've already logged in, and so it's going to log me in automatically. And that's okay. Um, there's other websites as well associated with this. One of them is called the admin. And this one is 
in this case, because this is a federated server, it's asking me for a very special user to log in, and that's the ArcGIS server administrator. Now, something like this does exist for portal as well, so 7443. So now we're going to be passing through this web adapter to get it 7443. And this one is called ArcGIS uh, Portal Admin. And that brings up the portal admin. Again, same problem. It's using a self-signed certificate internally. So that's normal that it gives you this connections not private warning. Um, you can check that to make sure. So basically the certificate is invalid. Why is it invalid? Because it's an IP address. So yes, I know, I understand that the implications of this and then it allows you to log in to the portal directly as the portal admin. And I'm not gonna do that. That's beyond scope of this course. Um, I just wanted to show you that those services are available. Now I can access those here because this is an administration machine. Your normal users may not be able to access those ports and that's actually a normal way of working things. So if we go back to my diagram here, you can see the firewall is here and you're coming in from the public. All of these internal ports are not available past this. The only two that it would be available are this. So if you tried to change the URL slightly to access this directly, it's not permitted. The firewall will prevent that connection from occurring. The only way to access it is through the web adapter. And the web adapter itself won't let you get at some of these items, depending on how you have it configured. I have it somewhat configured. This one would let me through, but this one would not. It basically would say, I don't understand what you're talking about if you tried to access that. So if I bring up a new URL here and try to do that, so colon 7443, uh, portal admin, but let's not go through 743443. Let's go through port 443 because we're using HTTPS. You'll see we just get not found. And that's simply because the server itself isn't listening on that. It's listening on this port internally on the computer and it's the web adapter's job to pass through only traffic that's permitted and it doesn't see those items. So uh, security is a big part of ArcGIS Enterprise and understanding how to make all this stuff work together. It's a lot. And unless you really need all this functionality internally, ArcGIS Online is fine. So basically use ArcGIS Online to do what you need until you know you don't need it. So here's another trick. You can actually add ArcGIS Online items into your portal. And you can even add ArcGIS server items directly into uh, your ArcGIS Online as well. So you could actually publish your own ArcGIS server services, not have it federated with portal and have it accessed. So I know it's sort of like taking a crayon and writing all over my, my uh, uh, slide here, but uh, it, there's a lot of flexibility in this infrastructure and you can kind of mix and match between ArcGIS Online and ArcGIS Enterprise as another option to uh, be able to make this work. Okay, so back to um, how we, we make things work. Let's focus on just the ArcGIS server side of things for a moment. So first off, it's REST powered. And you saw me use that REST endpoint a few different times. So if we go back to the slide or to the, the item here, so this is the manager tool. That's not the way you access the data. If you remember, you access the data um, by going to REST services. And you can see there's a hosted service and it has one item listed right now because I'm not logged in. If I go log in on it, it will then have the two items because security is involved at that point. So now I'm logged in as the GIS user. So now I have access to that item. So security is involved. Um, so this REST endpoint even allows you to control who can see what. So uh, pretty, uh, pretty cool. So that's the REST endpoint. And it's an important part of ArcGIS server on how to make it work. Now, ArcGIS server does have many different ways it can publish data, and typically you need to have these uh, deployed in their own capacity. So a map you just saw, feature service, you saw hosted feature service as well. You saw that as well. Uh, there's other ones, and I'm not gonna go through each, but just recognize each one of these may or may not require federation with a server or using it in a different way or uh, even uh, in better 
newer licenses, not new or better, uh, just more licensing from Esri. Now, port 6080 and 7080 are HTTP, meaning they're not secured. So they're not recommended to be used. And Esri is actually phasing them out in a lot of different things. So uh, they used to work well. Now they are working less. And I have a feeling they'll even be less available in the future. So you can almost skip remembering these and just focus on 6443 and 7443 for administration if you need it. These ones do use SSL and they're using HTTPS. So the traffic between anywhere on the computer um, out to the internet to your portal or to your ArcGIS server is encrypted. Nobody can uh, take a peek at what you've been sending, including your token and other items. So it's really important to uh, use um, HTTPS in all of these different environments. Uh, never let applications directly connect to any of these internal ports. So all these ports that are in gray right now, you should never use in any application. So a web map, um, survey one, two, three, field maps, experience builder. If you're entering a URL in those, make sure you use the URL that does not have these numbers in them. So only use port 80 and 443, which you don't have to specify the port, those are the defaults. Never use any other port out on the internet. That's very dangerous. Uh, why? I just showed you, you can access a whole bunch of administrative functions by using those ports. And you do not want your users to get at those. So typically they're blocked at the firewall. So even though you might be able to use it and everything works, when your user goes out in the field and tries to use one of these applications and gets the data, it just, it won't access it, it'll fail. So that gives you a little bit of a tour of uh, ArcGIS um, Enterprise and gives you an understanding of how it works with ArcGIS online. Uh, obviously there's a lot more to understand with this. Uh, it's a very big product. I hope that at least gives you a start. Thank you very much.